Okay, welcome back. And today we're going to do a we're going to cover another topic in this uh, chapter, and the topic is going to be about behaviors at zeros. So we know from again previous videos and discussions that the zeros are where the um, the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, so they're the x-intercepts. And so we know how to find zeros using the things that in our toolbox, you know, factoring quadratics or the factor theorem and the remainder theorem and the fundamental theorem of algebra and things like that that we've learned. Um, so now what we're interested in is when we graph these, you know, what are they going to look like? And so one of the things we want to know is what happens at those zeros? Because it's not always the same. So in this case, I just gave put in this example up here. And so we've got a polynomial that's in factored form. And so we know by the zero product principle that we've got zeros here, whatever makes these zeros. So here, when x is negative 1, we have a 0. So we have a 0 at, oops, negative 1 comma 0. Okay, we also have a 0 at negative 2, comma 0, because if x is negative 2, y is 0. And we also have 1 at 1. Okay, so we know we have three zeros. What's the behavior? Well, here what we're going to do is we're going to look at what we call the multiplicity. The multiplicity of a zero. And the multiplicity of a zero is directly related to the exponent on the factor. Okay? So notice that these three factors have different exponents. So of course, this one here is assumed to be 1. If there's no exponent, obviously it has to be 1. Okay, so, so now, what happens when this is, has a multiplicity of 1, in other words, the exponent is 1, it's going to cross the x-axis. Okay? When the multiplicity is 1, in this case it's going to cross, well, again here, it depends on whether we have a positive a or not. So here's, let me put, uh, well not a, um, let me just use plus or minus. Okay, if it's plus, that means it's going to have a general positive slope. So it's going to cross like this. If it's negative, it's going to cross like that. Okay, what about if it has a multiplicity of 2? Let's look at this one. So what's happening at the point negative 2, 0 if the multiplicity is 2. So we have a repeated 0, so it's repeated twice. Therefore, the multiplicity is 2. Okay? Well, if it's 2, in this case, it's going to touch. But it's only going to be tangential. Uh, well, it's not going to be tangential. Let me, let me rephrase that. Um, it's going to not cross, so it's going to touch and just be tangential to the line. Okay, so that means it's going to do something like this. Okay, so now again I'm dealing with the positive first, so let's do positive and negative. So again, like that. So, if it's positive, it's going to be above the x-axis, it's going to touch down, it's going to just be tangential to the point, and then it's going to change direction. Okay? If it's negative, right, then it's going to do something like this. take the arrows off because that's not necessary. Because we don't know what's going to happen afterwards. So this is just in a general neighborhood of the point. 
Okay, so now let's look at this one. So this one's three, so it has a multiplicity of three. It's an odd power, but it also has a, uh, it's a cube, right? So that means it's going to behave similar to one because it's odd. So it's going to cross, but because it has a multiplicity of three, it's going to be flatter, which means it is going to be tangential. So it's going to cross and it's going to be tangential to the point. So it's going to look something like this. So now if it's positive, it's going to have a general positive slope. <clears throat> so it's going to look something like this. Okay, so notice how the concavity changes. So it goes from concave down and then it changes to concave up, but it's tangential. It flattens out here and it's tan tangential. Okay, now if it's negative, it's going to have a, a, a general negative slope. So it's going to look something like this. So these are the behaviors. Now, what if I went to x, what if I had another one that was to the fourth power? Then it's going to behave like these two, but it's going to be flatter. It's going to be tangential. What if I went to x to the fifth? Well, then it's still going to look like this, but it's, again, it's going to be flatter. Okay? So general, the, the general behavior, as we've seen before, with higher and higher um, exponents as far as degrees of the polynomial. But guess what? The same sort of behavior happens at the zeros of the polynomial as well, which again is connected to the same thing. Because remember, the form of what we were talking about earlier was just this simple one, right? Well, on this one, the zero, there's only one zero. It's right through the origin, okay? So now what we're doing is we're basically taking what we were seeing for this function and expanding it to other polynomials in general, because other polynomials may have, will, will, will have more than one x-intercept, more than one zero. So we want to say, hey, how does it behave at all of the zeros, each and every one of them? So this is what we're going to use. Okay, we're going to look at their multiplicity of the factors. Um, and the zeros, the multiplicity of the zeros. Okay, that's it. Have a great day.